All right, what's up everybody? I'm back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna do part three of nodal analysis, right? So in this problem, we have a kind of different looking circuit than the previous problems. And our goal for this video, or this problem I should say, is to solve for what V naught is in the circuit, right? So our goal is to solve for what V naught is in the circuit, right? And we're gonna use nodal analysis to figure out what that is. So the first thing that we should do is kind of label our node. So we have V1 over here. We have V2 in the middle. And we have V3 over here, right? And then we also have on the bottom our reference node, right? And if you remember from our previous videos that our reference node is always zero, right? Because there's no voltage going through the reference node, right? Because V1 and V2 and V3 are all directly connected to the reference node. So essentially, if we find, want to find the current, it'll be V1 minus 0, V2 minus 0, and V3 minus 0 because they're all connected by the reference node, right? But we might go into more detail with that in, later on in this video, right? So we have our three nodes on the top, we have our reference node on the bottom, and then we have to find out what V0 is, right? And we can know that to find V0, all we have to do is find V3. So we know we only need to solve for V3 because V3 is essentially the same as equal to V0. And this is because V3 is directly connected to a reference node. And because V3 is directly connected to a reference node, when we find V0, that's also directly connected to a reference node. So the plus is on the V3 side and the negatives on the reference node side. That means that the plus is essentially equal to what V3 is as it's both connected to the same reference node, right? So essentially V3 is equal to positive v naught right so to solve v naught all we have to do is kind of solve for v3 so let's get right into it and see how, what we can do to solve for what v3 is right so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to see what can we do that has v3 in an equation right so we know our first equation right off the bat right if we have two nodes here so let's just write v3 over here we know that if we connect the v1's node right so this node connected to the v3 node there's a 12 volt source in between it, right? So we know that V1 minus V3, and we're doing V1 minus V3 because we always do the positive end minus the negative end, and we have it equal to the voltage in the middle, right? So the positive end is V1. So we're gonna do V1, right, and the positive end minus, and the negative end is V3, right? So negative end is V3. So we do minus V3 is equal to what is in the middle. So it's the 12 voltage voltage source, right? So the 12 volt voltage source is what is in the middle. So that is essentially what our equation one is. We have V1 minus V3 is equal to 12 volts. So that was our first equation involving V3. But now we need to find a second equation that has V3. So we can then use our substitution to figure out what V3 is. So if you guys can just take maybe a couple minutes and try and figure out what you think the second equation is and what we could use to find it. All right, so pause the video right now. See if you can kind of finish the rest of this problem. Take a couple minutes. All right, for those of you that are still here, let's figure out what we have to do to find V3, another equation, to kind of solve for it using substitution, right? So let's look ahead at what uh, node 2 is, right? So node 2 is a node that is able to use V3 in the equation, right? So we already have something that we know. So you have 6 milliamps coming in. So if we use a KCL equation, we can essentially write, so we have six milliamps coming in, right? And that six milliamps is gonna part two ways. So we have a current going this way, and we also have a current that's going this way, right? So we have two currents coming down here, right? So it's labeled this one I1 and this one I2, right? So essentially we have six milliamps is equal to I1 plus I2. And we know that this statement holds true because the current going into a node must equal the current going out of the node. So if we know this is the equation for node two, this is a node two KCL equation, right? So six milliamps is equal to I1 plus I2. Now let's figure out what can we do to find I1 and what can we do to find I2? Well, if we look at our nodal analysis, we know that this I1 continues throughout, right? So I1 is the same here. So we know to find this I1, we know that we can use our reference node, right? So we can do that six milliamps 
is equal to I1. So our I1 is essentially V1 minus 0 over 4K, right? So V1 minus 0 over 4K. And that will give us our I1 that's coming down here as it's the same in this uh, singular loop, right? So V1 minus 0 over 4K. So essentially we get V1 over 4K for I1. And then what about I2? Well, I2, it circles down back here as well. So it goes from node 3 all the way down to the reference node in the middle, right? So in this loop, we can do V3 minus 0 over 6K over here to find out what I2 is, right? So we have our nodal analysis here. So we know that our current is equal to V over R. So because of that, we can follow that rule and we can do V3 divided by 6k, which is our resistance from this node to the reference node, right? So from this node to our reference node over here, we know is V3 minus 0 over 6k, right? So the resistance in the middle, right? And that is all equal to 6 milliamps, right? So now let's simplify this equation to see what we get. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by 4. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So we're going to get rid of this 4 here. So if we do 4 times 6 milliamps, is equal to V1 over 4 plus 4 V3 over 6. Actually, let me get, let me start getting ahead of myself. Right, so this would be multiplied by 4. And these 4s would cancel out. And this 4 would come in here. And these multiply, right? So essentially what we get is 6 times 4, which is 24. So we get 24 milliamps is equal to V1 plus 4 V3 over 6. Now, we still have to get rid of the 6, right? So our next step would be, let's use a different color. So we're going to do 6 times 24 milliamps, right? So we're essentially going to bring this 6 to the top, is equal to V1 plus 4 V3 over 6, multiplied by 6. And then what do we get here? Well, we get 6 times 24, which is 144 milliamps, is equal to 6V1 plus, and then these two 6s cancel out, so it's just plus 4V3. And that essentially is what our equation is, and that is our equation too. So we have 144 milliamps is equal to 6v1 plus 4v3. And that is how we're able to find it using our nodal analysis for the node 2. As you can find the current going from, all right, let me just clean this up a little bit. So we can find the current i1 and i2, right? So we can find the current coming from here to here, from this node to this node. And we can find the current coming from here to here, from this node to this node as well, right? So our resistances are in the middle. So we have 4k over here, and we have our 6k over here. So we're able to find I1 and I2. And this is all equal to 6 milliamps in the middle, right? If we follow our KCL convention laws of current, as the current entering node uh, 2 has to equal the current leaving node 2, right? So now that we have our second equation, let's go back ahead and see what our first equation was, right? So our first equation was V1 minus V3 is equal to 12 volts. So let's go ahead and write that down here. So we have 12 volts is equal to V1 minus V3 and I made a little mistake here. Let's also remember that this is not 144 milliamps, but because we multiply the resistor um, by the current, this is actually 144 volts as well, right? This is 144 volts because resistance times amps um, is equal to voltage. So we have 144 volts over here. So we have 144 volts equal to 6V1 plus 4V3, and then 12 volts is equal to V1 minus V3. And now what we do is just simple substitution. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we want to find out what V3 is equal to, we have to find out what V1 is equal to in terms of V3. So essentially, if you have to simplify this equation, we get 12 volts minus V3 or plus V3 actually, because we change the sign when we bring it over, is equal to V1, right? So we take this V1 and we plug it into our equation too, and let's see what we get we get 144 volts is equal to 6 and then times V1. Well, V1 is now 12 volts plus V3, right? And then we add that to 4 
v3 and essentially what we do now is just isolate for v3 and find out what that value is right so we get 144 volts what's 6 times 12 we get 72 volts right then plus 6 goes into the v3 so it's plus 6 v3 plus 4 v3 simplify this further what's 142 we're going to bring this 72 over so it's 142 minus 72 which essentially just becomes 72 is equal to 6 plus 4 is equal to 10 v3 then we have to do 72 divided by 10 is equal to v3 right because we're just going to divide both sides by 10 these cancel and then what we do to the right side we have to do to the right side i mean to the right side we have to do to the left side right so essentially what we get is v3 is equal to 7.2 volts and now our goal was to find out what v naught was equal to right but we said from the start that v3 is equal to the positive of v naught right because v3 is connected to the reference node so the positive of the v naught is equal to what v3 is right so essentially our final answer is v naught is equal to 7.2 volts right and that is how we've solved v naught for this circuit using nodal analysis so i hope you guys enjoyed and understood the video if you guys did please make sure to like comment share and subscribe and also if you have any questions or concerns please comment down below or email at sharingacademy at gmail.com and if you guys have any specific problems or concepts that you guys want me to go over please comment down below and i'll make sure to make a video on it as soon as possible all right thanks for watching guys